All right now. I ain't never seen a motherfucker look this good laying down. <laughs> Shit. Back like cook crack. You already know who this motherfucker is. Shamal's favorite lover is always Donald Peasley. Alongside of LaShawn. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Just came from, um, what's, that, what's, the, um, what's that place called? The venue or whatever? Marcus <laughs> Venue whatever? Uh, you know, Marcus. Marcus Martin. It don't matter. They got one on there. You should go. <laughs> It's a beautiful day, man. Shout out to all y'all for liking, comment, subscribing, and doing everything I do every week. We do appreciate y'all. I uh, know we, um, I think we scared y'all last episode, didn't we? <laughs> well, we <still. laughs> Why we scared y'all one of them times? Yeah, facts. Damn. Facts. What, y'all, what y'all thought was going to happen? Salute, yeah, my brother. Salute. Come on. <laughs> no. we, ain't, we ain't going to say I had a link to this one right here. This is exclusive. <laughs> only, only in Georgia. Only in Georgia right here. Live from Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Imagine that, boy. Episode one through ten. Y'all niggas would never expect that, boy. Change of events. But we're back. Well, technically they wouldn't know that, but shit. Last la- time, last, last time recorded what? Shit, last time I saw you was what, two months ago, three months. Shit, ago? my birth was it? Um, the fifteenth. Yeah, cause you left before your birthday. Yeah. yeah. Shit. Speak. My birthday is actually pretty cool. But damn, how, how, yeah, how, how was your birthday? Yeah, facts. Shit. I was it was dope, man. My um lady took me to the spot. Mm. Um, I forgot what it's called though. I forgot what it's called. Um, it was pretty dope. Chilled on the balcony. I got a balcony, people. I'm very uh, <laughs> I don't got a backyard, but I got a balcony. <laughs> so, um, it's cool, man. My birthday was cool, you know. Um, just gave thanks for everything I have, everything I'm gonna get by the grace of God. Mm. So I, you know, I've been um, shit, man. Another year older, man. I just feel like I gotta get my spiritual life together. So mm-hmm. that's what I've been um that's what I've been doing. Um, you know, more praying. Um just give him give him more thanks. Give him more thanks and not being hard on myself and understanding the journey. Like I'm just mm. Maybe like, Atlanta, it yeah, I, I, <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, man, I've been I feel like just being away from not saying like the people I was around was distractions, but I got it's easier for me to focus out here. Mm. Cause with I don't take it I don't take it no way, like with life. It's more of an out of sight, out of sight, out of mind. Mm. So not a lot, not a lot of people hit me up. People that do hit me up, I appreciate. It. If you didn't, still got love for you. Mm. So with them not hitting me up, I'm more focused on. I'm I'm sitting on my computer. I ain't gonna lie, I gotta stop doing that though. I'm at the computer from like one one p.m. to like eleven o'clock, just sitting there. It's a good shift. Nah, my nigga, bro, we got glasses. We can't be doing that. <laughs> so with stuff like that, it's like I'm focusing more. You know, um, me and my lady, we out here chilling. You know, she's doing great. If you're wondering, she's always great. She with a great man. <laughs> Shout out to this wine right here, man. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all where I got it from. What's up with you, brother? Did all oh, I don't know what LA been up to. Wait, hold on, hold on. How mm-hmm. does it feel? Because even though we come out weekly, mm-hmm. it has been a very, very long time since we potted, mm-hmm. right? But how does it feel mm-hmm. to have your own place, living on your own? Well, I ain't. Yo, no we more. Gotta, you got to. You got to be out. I ain't gonna front. Sometimes I be. Sometimes I get a little obnoxious. Sometimes, yeah. I'm not gonna lie to you. Out of respect for me and my lady's relationship, but it get a little obnoxious. I'm like, yo, we got neighbors. <laughs> it turned into that. It turned to my parents' next door. It turned to yo, we got neighbors. But well, fuck the neighbors. Yep. I ain't gonna lie, but one got a dog. The other one be arguing with her boyfriend. So I don't think niggas paying us anymore. <laughs> but it's cool though. It's cool, you know. Um. It's a big difference. I ain't gonna front. You talking about you sipping, brother? This sound like a goat. Pause. I'm sorry. <laughs> kind of nice. Wine. Yeah, I'll tell you what it is later. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, it's dope, man. Waking up, you doing your own thing. You don't gotta worry about mom and dad bothering you. Mm. I only gotta worry about one person bothering me. Mm. <laughs> but she be doing her own thing, so I ain't really tripping off that. But it's it's, it's dope, man. The another thing I love. It's one thing we both we both hated. Being in the parents' crib. That area the right there. The kitchen? That area right there. <laughs> There'll be times where I'm cooking and, sh- and my lady will come out from the bedroom and look at me. I'm like, oh, bro, not right now, bro. Mm. Not right now. Mm. And just silence out the sounds. I'm playing music. Mm. So that's my peace right now. That's my. Mm. You see the candles over there. Yeah. You see the sage over there. <laughs> you see what I got going on over there, man. <laughs> come on. I'm, 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 I'm blessed. Yeah, I'm blessed and highly favored by the like grace that. of God. Man. I like that. I like that. What's up with you, brother? Maybe, maybe I do need to leave the room. <laughs> no, I think it's, I think it's the distractions, bro. Well, for me, 
I haven't been home. <laughs> Like a tour, I, man. You on tour I, right now? I've, I've been living on the road. I mean, this is my third stop in what five weeks. Mm-hmm. I did LA for a week, mm-hmm. then Florida for a week, and now I'm here in, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was kind of like I'm having one of those moments where it feels surreal, but I'm trying to take it all in. Like, yo, I've always envisioned working on the road, Mm -hmm. traveling, doing what I love to do. So that's a cool, cool thing for me now is even though I'm trying to celebrate it and enjoy it, it's kind of like, damn, when's the next bag? Yeah, that's that's the entrepreneurial lifestyle. I mean, that's never going to change though. Yeah, yeah. That's that's my only kind of worry and like not trying to blow all this money, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to be mature with this money. Mm -hmm. But even with that, it's like, it's always, once you get more money, you got more things to buy. So what you been working on? <laughs> I mean, you know, a couple of shows, mm-hmm. a couple <laughs> of shows. Uh, I, still, I still helped uh, Cam with uh, season two shout so far. Cam. with Yeah, shout out to Cam for Handcrafted. You know, he's doing big things out there in LA. Mm-hmm. It's dope. Um even that trip was different. Like I stayed downtown. Mm-hmm. I stayed at the uh, Dream Culture? Dream. I'm about to say oh, this nigga. That one get that nigga. I stayed at the Dream Hotel. Okay, that's so good. Which is different. Like mm-hmm. it was in the heart of Hollywood. And mm-hmm. It was kind of like yeah, this is dope. But then the other opportunity was in Florida. And that's a, just a different type of. That's a different type of exposure, like not exposure in the sense of people knowing you, but what life could be like. Mm -hmm. Waking up to 75 degree weather, and then by once I'm done working, I could go relax on the beach. Beach Just chill, (laughs) just fucking ah. like do one of these and just just vibe. You know what I'm saying? That life is like, it is one of those moments where it's like, yo, this is possible. Yep. And that's what I've been experiencing lately. Like, yo, this is this is really, really possible. Like, if you think about it, well, I didn't think about it, but once you get exposed to something, you realize, like, yo, this is possible. Like, I could do this. Mm-hmm. I could make a living out of this mm-hmm. and live well. But then it's like, you know, you still got the, those moments where, you know, self-doubt, but I, it doesn't kick in as much. Love that. It doesn't kick in as much, but it's still there. But you know, I I kind of handle it better than I I was before. But then when you get back to New York, it's kind of like gritty again. How does my like even is- here being here this morning? Mm-hmm. Sorry, no, you good, you good. I'm checking into the hotel, and everybody's greeting me. Like, so on. polite, yeah, Who's so polite. Some of them, some of them don't be saying shit back. <laughs> but that's fine because I'm used to that mm-hmm. in New York. But it's kind of like you know. Do you want some breakfast? How you doing, sir? Yes. <laughs> but me traveling, being you getting oh, uh even Florida was kind of like that type of hospitality. It was like, yes, I would love some breakfast. Mm-hmm. You know, when people try to help you, mm-hmm. take the help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's what I realized. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, depends. yeah I gauge it. Fit. But now it's like it's not so quick to like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Yes, I would love some breakfast. Would you like some? Would you like some wine, sir? Yes, I would. Three egg whites. Oh, that's like I said, three egg whites <laughs> with some with some uh, peppers and mushrooms and, and some potatoes, please. Put extra put extra oregano, salt, and pepper. You know what I'm saying? Potatoes, but yeah, I kind of it's, it's it's cool. But um, being in that part of Hollywood, I yo, I see what they talk about, like the amount of fake shit that yeah. goes on. Boy, but the thing about it is like it's like that down here though. It is Black Hollywood, girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is Black Hollywood, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to tell you without saying too much. So, I had a conversation with a, with a, with a brother. And I don't know if you know of um, Cam. I think it's Cam Kirk. Yes, the, the photographer. photographer out here. Yes. <clears throat> I guess he has a studio and the dude was like, I'm chopping up with him. I'm like, yeah, I'm a photographer. I was like, yeah, I applied to He's like, yeah, I know um, Cam Kirk and all of my known people. I'm like, oh, like that's, that's what's up. I'm not trying to have no conversation about... Me getting put on. Like, I'm just, oh, that's cool. Like, I'm a photographer. That's all I want to let you know. Mm. He was like, I could, I made that call right now. You want the job? I mean, like, you don't got to do that. Mm. I've been in situations where it's like, all right, we even had this conversation. Every, when he did that shit, I was like, yeah, we in LA just had this conversation. So I'm trying to make like you the plug, bro. Because mm. mm-hmm. when I hit, I hit Sun up, he's like, oh, he's not answering. Like, I think a few hours later after that, 
I hit him up on um, Instagram. I was like, yo, I appreciate you for the hospitality. Um, I think it's, it's cool going to your spot and everything. Like, if you could set that up, that would be dope. Mm. That's me going out of my comfort zone. Mm. Three hours later, scene. It's like- That's it. I was like, it's the same shit, but <clears throat> the reason why I didn't feel away is I ain't asking for shit. Mm. You made yourself look like a fucking idiot. So I was like, yo, this shit ain't that far off from like Hollywood. And they, they call it Black Hollywood. It's like not far from New York. Like, yo, you stunting like you that guy, but you not. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. You making yourself look bad. Mm-hmm. So that's like, I'm, I'm adjusting to out here even more. Like even with the driving, the, um, the hospitality is different. Um, what else? What else is going on out here? Even with the, the violence. Mm. Bro, oh, okay. So you know where I live. I live next to a Publix. Mm. I can say that because it's like 35,000 miles here. <laughs> There's legit four down the block. Yeah. So Now, when I saw that, I was like, oh, nah, Don got it made. <laughs> I got it made, got it made, got it made. <laughs> but as I'm walking into the Publix, it's not no, I'm, I'm, you're not home, bro. It's in Kansas no more. Bro, like, I walked in, white man, gun on him in the head. Mm. Out? You said out? Yeah. I ain't on front. I wanted to dip, but I ain't on front. No, 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 no. Was it out for you to see? Oh, it was in the holster. Mm. Dirty Harry, bang, bang. That's, that's how he looked, bro. He had the shit right there, bro. Mm. With a cowboy hat on. I was like, yo, bro, he gotta be racist. Mm. <laughs> he gotta be racist, bro. I'm sitting looking at him. I looked at the cashiers. They saying good morning to him. I said, yo, bro, nobody go grab this thing. I'm the only one like, on alert right now. I'm looking at this nigga like, yo, bro, it's a black, it's a black cashier. How you doing, sir? I say, yo, boy, why are you greeting this man, bro? It's Call the cops. <laughs> Call the cops. And this nigga just, he just mosey on down the aisle, smiling. I say, yo, bro, this ain't home no more. Mm. But I, it's, it's something I got to adjust to. Like, that's a, like, niggas always like, yeah, I, even hanging out with my man. This is crazy. There's so much shit happening in my little time here. Hanging out with my mans. I think we go to another spot. He was like, damn, I don't know if I'm going to go to that spot. I'm like, why? I don't got that fire on me. I say, yo, bro, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, yo, bro, we about to go out to drink, bro, and just hang out. Nah, bro, I can't go out nowhere without my fire. I say, yo, all right, bro, I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> if this is how we got to move outside, I'm going to go home, bro, because ain't no way everywhere we got to go, we got to have a gun on you. Mm. If you are, if you... Live down here or know about down here, there's some shit called Atlanta Scoop. Bro, if you live out here, don't watch that shit. Why? Wow. Like what you gonna see is niggas getting robbed, niggas getting shot at, niggas shooting at cops. I said, yo, bro, no reason for me to watch that shit. It's like, it's like fucking, um, what's the shit called again? One of those blogs that niggas hate. Uh, uh Shade Room? Shade, it's like Shade Room for violence mm. in Atlanta. Like World Star yeah. in the early 80s. Yeah. Got you. Even that's, that's what Justin told. Yeah, so so even me, mm-hmm. I kind of got off of social media, and it was not because of um, LA. You blocked me. <laughs> we got beef. I appreciate the people who just checked in to check in, like yo, you good? And it was like, yeah, bro, I'm just off of social media, and which is which is interesting because people assume mm-hmm. because you off social media Somehow. something wrong. But with in all actuality, yo, I'm like, shit is great. This shit's fun without it. I ain't gonna fun. You know what I'm saying? Shit is great. Like, you know, I still uh, use the WAG page to post. Mm-hmm. But outside of that, I ain't really... And plus, like, you just seen Ruben set me something. Or, or, or my guys will still send me, like, funny things. Shit from the group. Shit from so, so, I could keep, so I could stay kind of in the loop. But... <laughs> Take a street like a nigga like a nigga in jail. Don't put the nigga on everything and come out. <laughs> but I'm not really missing out on anything at all Damn in shit. a sense. You know what I'm uh, saying? And not. I feel like I have like a uh I have my own thoughts. Mm-hmm. You know, where I could think mm-hmm. whatever I'm thinking is based off of my thoughts mm-hmm. alone and not based off of other people's opinion and I'm kind of going off of which I which might be wrong. Opi- I might be wrong. Right. So, I just have more time to focus on me and things of that nature, you Congrats. know. Congrats. And I've been enjoying uh, the success that I've been having. Mm-hmm. And um, that type of success makes me want to get better. But, LA, you say these words like success. You talk about you traveling with, with, with your craft. How can doubt even pop up, though? Because- That's always a thing. Like, yo, bro, you... 
I'm not gonna say what you've done, but you've done it. Mm. Yo, boy, you you knew the task and you did it. You got it done. But see, how is there doubt in your mind that you cannot achieve what you've already done? Okay, so the two the two the two uh the two factors are right. Mm-hmm. One, as crazy as it sounds, um, can I do this again? Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah, I got to the finals. Mm-hmm. Maybe I want a chip, but I'm already thinking about next season. Mm-hmm. Like, can right. I, can the job I, ain't done. You know what I'm saying? Job ain't finished. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Which, honestly, before we um, before we decided, like, yo, should we continue the pod? Mm-hmm. There was a moment where I was like editing one of the episodes, mm-hmm. and I'm like. Mm-hmm. We got unfinished business. That's a fact. That's like I, I, I feel like we still got more to say. Mm-hmm. You know, we got more, more things to talk about. Like mm-hmm. we're growing as men, and mm-hmm. and and I think something that was uh, near and dear to my heart as far as this show was like that level of transparency. That yo, even though we take some fire picture, mm-hmm. pictures, mm-hmm. we go through real shit in real life. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, mm-hmm. we uh. I feel like we still have more to say and more to share and and it's not even on some like show offy type shit. Mm-hmm. Like yo, look what we doing. Look where we came from. Yeah. It's kinda like there's a lot of unfinished business mm-hmm. with this show. And um that's the reason why I was like, Yeah, I think I think I could I could do this. And then there's another thing is like I feel some type of way working on other people's shit mm-hmm. and not mm-hmm. my own. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what, make, what? Why, what? Why am I making somebody else look great? I mean, I can't look good. Like, yo, boy, I got... If y'all don't know what LA got in his arsenal of cameras, <laughs> why would I record somebody with this beautiful camera and not put it on my beautiful face? Facts. Not let my beautiful, luscious skin show. Or, or at least let my platform thrive off of this quality. You know what I'm saying? So yes, uh, I did uh, invest in a, a, a 8K camera, and um, it was quite a penny. Man, man, nigga said, nigga said we ain't jacking those red cameras no more. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, we we you are now looking at the uh, the main shot of us in 8K, which is which is dope. But it's like, yeah, the first thing that came to my mind is like, yo, I can't wait to use this on WAG mm-hmm. because to me, that's that's a part of. The show, the quality that you get to watch. I, I enjoy watching people watch us on TV. I think that's like the dopest shit it's in the beautiful. world. Facts. Like, you know, when Joe did used to post us, mm-hmm. he would post us from his I bed. Ain't, I ain't got nothing to say for that nigga <laughs> Kojo, man. <laughs> he, would, he would show us on the TV and, and other people, uh, shout outs to Tati. Tati would show shout us on, Tati. A, oh, on, yes. a, on a computer. And I, uh, and I always thought that was dope. Like, yo, the quality looks great. And, um, so I was like, yeah, I got to invest back into what I'm doing because if it wasn't for the show, I don't think I'd be where I am now, right? Well, you've been a record. I could have. Somewhere, because you know, I really, I wanted to move up in the company where I was working, but it was like, why would I want to move up for a company where I can move up for myself? And um, that, why, was, that was important to me. Why you said where, where you were working? Cause I haven't been there. No, oh, don't say like you don't work there. <laughs> no, I still work there. I'm still on on uh, an active payroll, but because of uh, COVID and how I was able to and use injuries. the and, <laughs> <laughs> nigga ankle now, I don't work. <laughs> and how I'm able and my childhood asthma. <laughs> <laughs> This nigga remind me of Frank from fucking um. <laughs> this nigga is Wong from Shameless, but um. <laughs> The way the way that uh, <laughs> on disability. I was able to utilize my time, mm-hmm. you know, I invested in myself, and that was tough too. Mm-hmm. Getting that bag right, mm-hmm. cause the crazy thing, I um, I'm still handling my like my 2019 taxes. It's really slow because of COVID, mm-hmm. but I had to resubmit my 2019 tax form, Dang. right? But Pull it, going to my company's website, pulling up my my tax my uh my whatever the tax form is, mm-hmm. seeing what I made that year, mm-hmm. and then seeing what I made mm-hmm. in four months. <laughs> that niggas fuck y'all niggas. It's kind of like yo, bro. This, that niggas. 
There's no way I topped that. For all that labor, bro. Facts. Imagine that shit, bro. That was a year worth of stuff. Imagine how much the person that owns that company makes in that hour you work. Yeah. Bro, and I think I thought about that shit the other day. I'm like, that shit is nuts. But then but for, for me, bro, it's really how do I keep this up? That's why I don't want to get too big headed, too cocky, mm-hmm. too braggadocious, because it's like as soon as it could come, it's mm-hmm. as soon as it goes. So it's like, even then, it's like, yo, I worked 29 years to make this type of money in four months, right? But then again, it's like, do I trick it off? Because I like nice things, right? But then I'm like, yo, you got to prioritize this because, you know, there, there's this saying that, you know, everybody wants to live this dream, right? Mm-hmm. You, everybody want to live their dreams, but eventually... How long, how long does the dream last? So that, that's what kind of plays my mind. Like, yo, how long can I sustain this? Where does this take me? So for me, it's more about my humility isn't more on some like I'm scared, but it's like, yo, how do I keep this up? And then I don't feel like I'm my, I've reached my highest potential. So I don't want to act as if I'm there yet. Mm-hmm. So that's what keeps me grounded. Like, yo, I'm not like this big shot producer or whatever, whatever. You know, I got to, I think I got, I have, I'm building a resume, but mm-hmm. I don't want to come off too crazy in a sense. So yeah, like I have, trust me, I have my moments where, where I was working on a project in Florida and I'm like, yo, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like in the middle of my recording, like while they prepping or whatever, I'm really like just thanking God. Like, yo, thank you so much. <laughs> But, you know, a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people are going to ask me when that eventually happens or comes out or whatever, like, yo, how did that happen, right? Mm. And my answer, yo, you got to be good to people. Mm -hmm. You got to be good because you never know when somebody is going to refer you Mm -hmm. or your first impression Mm -hmm. on people Mm -hmm. It's tough because we be going through life. Mm-hmm. So you never know, you know, what, what type of day you're having. But my first impression on people mm-hmm. is literally like I try to make it a good one. Because you only got one time. That's a fact. You can only, you can only um, yeah. get so, one introduction. That's it. Right. So because I was maybe, I wouldn't say the, the best of friends of, with people, but you know, you greet people, you don't have animosity or whatever the case may be. And then they, they remember that. Like, yo, he's a good person and he does good work. I'm going to refer him. That, that to me is how I got this far, just being who I am, because people to kind of take a kindness to personality opposed to work. Because you can have the best work in the world and be a dickhead. Who wants to work with that? Or to maybe you rub people the wrong way and things, things of that nature. But at the same time, you kind of want to... Yeah, your first impression is what keeps you around for the most part. And that has literally been plaguing my mind. Like, what's my first impression of people and shit like that? Yeah, it's funny you say that, too. Um, since I've been... I've talked about this one time. Mm-hmm. Since I've been here... I've done a real estate job, red carpet job. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> With the red carpet one? No, the real, real estate. estate. It, was cool. it was cool. It was cool, but it's annoying editing it. And but remember when you, when you, when you left, mm-hmm. I said, bro. Yeah, real estate is where the money's at. Real estate is where you get your foot in the door. It, it is. I was so happy the to see way, that. I appreciate you. The way some of those real estate agents' budgets are set up, it's not set up for my price. Mm-hmm. Cause I shot through my prices like, oh, can we do it for this? I was like, I'm not doing this for the money right now. I didn't tell him that. I'm not, I'm not doing it for the money, but fuck it, mm. fuck it. It's like my, it's like my first full week out here. I was like, all right, cool. Mm. Did that, that went through, did all that, whatever, cool. Then I did the red carpet. Shout out to Fran and Reagan. Mm-hmm. Those two women were amazing mm. to um, do that event with. Um, I think the movie was called First Lady. Mm-hmm. First Lady. It was um. I guess the main person was Hoops from, I think, was it Flavor Love? Or? Yeah, didn't she date Shaq or yeah. something like that? Okay, yeah, yeah. I know Hoops. So, so, so yeah, um, if you see my Instagram, you know... She's single? You should. <laughs> oh, shit, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. <laughs> but, um, I did that, right? You said 
be good to people. Mm. Be good to people. As and funny you say that. You sent me a young lady that has her own studio, right? Yeah. It's funny that the person that put me onto the red carpet job put me on to do a photo shoot there. So I have to like they're gonna have an event there. I'm gonna be the photographer, the insta in house photographer there. That's beautiful. So that was funny as hell that you said that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As she was telling me, she's like, "Oh, I got another job for you. I got another job for you. Mm-hmm. Yo, I love your personality. I love you. I'm, I'm gonna give you another job." She mm-hmm. said, "Yo, I got a job for you in LA. I got a job for you in Alabama." Like mm-hmm. even her, like me being nice to her, bro, opened up all of those doors. It was like Yo, I can't. Even if I'm having a bad day, I can't give off that energy yep. to another person. I can't project yep. that to another person. Yep. So, that's how I've been out here, bro. Yeah. I tried not to... Whatever I got going on, I try not to put it on people. So... Yeah. Once I walk out that door, bro, I could be angry. Hey, if I walk out that door, bro, I got to put on... Not not put on the front, but I got to put on the smile because shit, another person might be having a bad day. Me smiling at that person could change their whole fucking trajectory of their whole day. Crazy, crazy enough, like, the job we both worked at, mm-hmm. the reason why I got that job is not because of the suit I had on. Mm-hmm. I didn't even have the resume to qualify for that job. At that time, I just had mad construction stuff. Mm -hmm. We applied for a customer service. I had Mm -hmm. no customer service history. I just had mad labor. You was telling those customers was cracking. I understand that. Now I I get it. Now I get it. (laughs) Nigga say, what's up? Pull up. I say, yo, bro, (laughs) you ain't got a cold switch, but damn. (laughs) Chill, boy. But yeah. I mean, Akash looking at this nigga. Nigga said, what's cracking? I said, Akash was like, I'm going on, I'm going on break. <laughs> I said, I can't do this shit no more. This nigga's going to be in trouble. But uh, the guy <laughs> said, yo, you came in smiling. Like, you came in and light the whole room up. I was like, he was like, plus I was the only black candidate. Oh, he was, oh, he was all straight, straight, straight. Um, Spanish, Spanish and, and white mm-hmm. people. So he kind of was like. I'm going to look out for you. He was like, you don't got what, what it takes to qualify, but you can learn that. But the energy that you came in with is the reason why I'm going to give you this job. I was, at that time, I don't, think I, I don't even think I had a shape up, bro. That's kind of that's kind of why I'm at where I'm at now. Like, yeah, I got that bag, but I remember when I had a bigger bag. Mm-hmm. And I blew that on like polos and rugby's and true religions. It's understandable. And, and I'm like, that's that PTSD of like, I, it took me. I did what well, the Barclays was like 2012. We got hired at that job at 2015. So it was kind of like maybe from 14 to 15, I was struggling to make ends meet. And at a young age, it was like, damn. And then I was prideful too, because it was like, yo, you made, you, you, I'm not going from making $22 an hour to 10. Oh, you twenty four at that time? No, nah, I was well when I when I started there, I was well, would we six years in there? Maybe twenty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but I was at the Barclays Center from like eighteen to maybe. That's, you're making grown man money. Though. Grown man money. Like I'm able to go out with the fellas after work, barely legal, mm-hmm. and I could pick up the tab. You can could, say y'all niggas y'all good. Yeah, <laughs> we could take turns. We take we used to take turns on Fridays on who pick up the tab and. When I see a six hundred dollar check, yo, keep the change. <laughs> <laughs> That's some real grown man shit. I bro. used to. I look back at that shit now, like, yo, bro, that was wild. <laughs> that niggas pay out part. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm the. No matter how much money I got, I'm the. Yo, I only cop the salad. <laughs> oh, now you. I ain't gonna front. You niggas, I hate though. I ain't gonna front. Everybody order fucking filet mignons and lobsters. That's maybe that. the one nigga with the lobster bisque for twenty for fifteen dollars in the water. I ain't, I ain't putting up for that. I I put like five dollars on the tip. <laughs> That's about it. I tip I tip well though. That's one thing I, I'm I'm prideful about. I tip well. Yeah. That that I don't mind. I can't but, tip under ten under ten dollars a dub. But if you ordered the the uh three hundred dollar steak, my my salad was only twenty five dollars. <laughs> you missed me. <laughs> I ain't trying to bring up these type of topics, bro. Stop going to these restaurants, bro. Ordering a tomahawk steak, bro. And asking niggas, you got to take cash out, bro. I'm going to start smacking shit out of niggas, bro. Niggas that did that shit at the um, steakhouse, bro. Niggas say, yo, when y'all take cash out, I, I just cash out, y'all get for the bread. I say, yo, bro. I looked at this nigga, I say, I'm out of here, my nigga. I'm out of here, bro. But that's neither here nor there. But yeah, I remember, I remember all of that. I remember those moments in life. And I'm like, all right, that keeps me grounded. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, that I got that job just big because I came in like smiling, bro. I came in with on some like, I gotta get this job. Bro, how often do you reflect on, on your on your past like yo bro I came a long way? How often do you do it like in real time? I'm, 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 it's funny you ask that. So off 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 mic, mm-hmm. you know what we talked about before I got here. Mm-hmm. That shit fucked with me. Mm-hmm. Not not the uh not the he said she said part, mm-hmm. but the is he too good? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo, how do I What's check? That, what did I do? How, did you check yourself? That's so that was one of those in the moments parts. Mm-hmm. Like like after you know, after you know, emotions mm-hmm. tied down, you sit down with it and it's like Damn, like, do I really come off like mm-hmm. I'm too good for people? Mm-hmm. And it's like, but there's certain things that I do morally mm-hmm. that just sits right with me. Mm-hmm. So, just a regular example, when I meet somebody, I don't hug them, especially mm-hmm. if it's a woman. Mm-hmm. A man is easy, though. We just that is simple. Good, my boy. Facts. Good, especially my boy. with COVID, you can do that. Good, my boy. You know what I'm saying? It's cool, but like... Women, I'm realizing, yo, that's offensive. Mm-hmm. But yeah, or, or just greeting mm-hmm. them with a simple hello. But I'm thinking I'm being respectful mm-hmm. by not putting, yo, bro. Th- putting the way right the here. way the culture is mm-hmm. right now, I'm so like, I don't want you I know. What I'm saying? Be, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. Right, but even and that, I don't want to be uncomfortable. It's, it's crazy that you have to do that, bro. What if hugging you makes me uncomfortable? No, I don't think nobody ever thought about that. Like, a hug makes me uncomfortable, bro. <laughs> I think we are in a time where people think about them first. Like, or, 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 or even think about it like this. Like, what if I decline a hug, mm-hmm. your hug, because I'm sick and I'm not trying to... But I have to verbally say that to you for you to feel better about yourself. But then what I would... Okay, so now it's going to protecting feelings, right? Mm-hmm. So now it's kind of like, how do I do a better job at protecting feelings? Now you gotta walk on eggshells. That's how that's how it usually goes. But see, that's kind of why I got off of social media. Because I felt like social media to me was eggshells. Even sometimes podcasting, like there's certain things that I would love to indulge on, but that's an eggshell topic. So why do it? If I gotta do that, then I don't wanna talk about it. I hate social. I know for I've grown to really hate this shit, bro. Yeah. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, bro. If we didn't have a podcast, bro. And I wasn't a photographer. I wouldn't be on this shit no more, bro. Me too. I really don't like it. Like me too. I, I saw um I forgot her name. It is the not one of the main women on post. I wanted to like give her her flowers, but I'm like shit. How would everybody on the so on the on the on the on the, on the socials feel about me bigging up a a, a trans woman? Mm. That got real deep, but. Oh, Joe Kassai, that's my thought the other day. I'm like, yo, bro, like, I'm just going to like it and retweet it. Mm, mm. The fact that I have to overthink about... Like, yeah. I'm like, yo, bro, I don't fuck with that, bro. I don't yeah. fuck with that, bro. Yeah. I, don't, I can't give a person that... Nah, I don't, that shit was just... That shit fucked with me for so long. Yeah. I never told my lady that, but I was like, yo, bro, I can't... I can't project... I can't tell my... Say my opinions on social media. Yeah. Be damned if I, be damned if I talk about clothes or... Or fucking basketball, be damned. Yeah, yeah, be and that's kind of what I loved about uh, Twitter at first. My just stating my uh, sports opinion. Oh, Jordan's the best player ever. And oh, then, are you fucking retarded? Yeah. We have, bro. <laughs> I feel. I said. I what I I said. You gotta yeah. read it. I feel like. Yo, I feel like. Yo, boy. So five minutes ago, you just told another person on, on Twitter they they have um a reason to feel. They have they can feel things. How I can feel out of who my favorite is. <laughs> I hate that shit. Yo, you dog. can literally say, in my personal <laughs> opinion, I I I'll, I'll even say this, right? I was watching a um a podcast clip, right? And this guy, matter of fact, the guy's from out here. He's he's one of the guys on the eighty five mm-hmm. South Show, with, right? Okay, with DC. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he he asked a question. I personally believe, oh shit, that crack cocaine did more damage to black people than slavery. And I'll tell you the reason, one of the reasons why. Because what took 400 years to do, crack did in 10. 
80, let's say 84 to 94, in 10 years, the damage that crack cocaine caused to the black community or the, just black people in general all across America was, you could never bounce back from. Is the crack era over? Yes, the era is over, but crack is, you know what I mean? That's why I personally believe that baking soda is the worst thing that ever happened to niggas, man. Because cocaine been around forever. Niggas been doing coke, niggas been doing drugs, but when they hit it with that arm and hammer, it turned into something that destroyed a community. But what is in that shit? You can clean your teeth with it, get corrosion off your car, put it in your refrigerator, nigga. Make cookies. Make cookies. (laughs) But when you hit it with some, when you mix it with some cocaine, and a little cold water. And some cold water. And, and, <laughs> and well, I mean, put a fork in and scrape that. And, and boy, yeah. I'm talking about for real. Yeah. My personal opinion, mm-hmm. I think that some people disagree, some people. Disagree. And he stated why he feels this way, but he posed it as a question. Mm-hmm. And people took it as if he I made a statement. statement. And it's like, and then, you know, the whole. Yo, black men get a mic and this, that, and the third. And I'm like, yo, that's I just don't want to see that shit. But basically, his question was, mm-hmm. do you feel like crack did more damage to the black community than yeah. slavery? Oh, I thought you about to say dead be dead or something <laughs> like that, bro. So, I was about to get Because he was like, yo, did the crack... He was like, what slavery did in 400 years, he feel like... He felt like... Crack did that in 10. So he just posed the question. He stated why he thought maybe crack could possibly... Bro, it was just a question to create dialogue. Whether you agreed with him or not... Yeah, crack was wild, bro. <laughs> it's like, both of them was just as wild. Like, this, whether, this whether, whether you, agreed, like with, just, whether you agreed with him or not, mm-hmm. or, or you feel like, yo, that's a wild question, but at least he posed a question opposed to saying... Yo, crack did more than slavery. Mm-hmm. He said, yo, do you feel like that was is possible or, or where do you rank them or whatever the case, whatever the way he posed it. And the, for way, the way he got attacked was just like... Like he said, it's like he said slavery is a choice. <laughs> but <laughs> yo, people don't but even that, it, it was bro. like, damn, son, like, it's just, it just, you just like, I, for me, it was more like, I don't need to see that, you know, I'm... I'm it's got to the point where my timeline got kind of boring because I kind of muted almost to- almost everybody. So it was like, you're not really seeing much. The only people I would see was probably like you, Don. I mean, <laughs> you, Joe. My, my, me, my, just my friends. But then it's like, yo, what's the point of following all these people yeah, you if you got everybody got muted? If everybody's muted. So to me, it was like that. But yeah, literally, I just was just thinking recently like, Yo, what is my my first impression with people? What is that like? You know what I'm saying? And it, it just it just it just fucked with me for a while. It really did. Did you did you ever ask anybody like who who, who do you think I was before you actually met me? Have you asked anybody? People don't care about that because because see with growth, mm-hmm. most people won't appreciate your growth if they weren't there from the beginning. So, so the certain certain people that we may even consider that from mm-hmm. wasn't there from the beginning. Mm-hmm. So even with the podcast, right? This may be somebody's first time watching. Mm-hmm. So they'll be like, yo, this shit is whatever their opinion is, mm-hmm. right? But they weren't there for episode one, so they don't see what we've evolved from. The Mevo and all this other stuff there. Even even yeah. off off of the the production the side, audio, audio and the, the audio our, side, our, our the content. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind of like, how could you appreciate something if you never saw it from the beginning, right? So like, this home that you built, I remember when you the the furniture didn't get here, but now you can appreciate. The real aspect of the home because now everything is the way you want or envision it or it's damn near close to it. But let's say you've never showed me that. Mm-hmm. I just come in, take my shoes off, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, sit down and relax. There's no real true appreciation to what someone has done because you haven't seen it. So mm-hmm. when I when I when I think of growth, you gotta just appreciate your own growth because mm-hmm. that's not something now it's challenging when Someone who was there from the beginning, mm-hmm. 
and they act like they play with you like that. Like you ain't grow to get here. Respectful at that point. Yeah, that that's a different topic. But like, as far as like the outside looking in, or or because me, like I said, me not hugging people or women in particular is me respecting our boundaries. So to actually be like, it's like, damn, what more do I have to do? <laughs> Do I have to explain? Listen, hey, the reason why I'm you not giving wear, you a hug is you gotta because got to wear a shirt with that shit on there. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I'm not giving you a hug is because I respect you as a black woman. And now you, man, oh, you sound like you're pandering. <laughs> so, so there are moments in life where it's like, damn, if you do, damn, if you don't. Those moments I kind of try to avoid, but sometimes in life you can't avoid certain shit. Like, so, and I feel like that was one of them. So we talked about um, when you will make your return. How will you do it though? Like, how will you readjust to that that scene? No, I just couldn't. I just because uh, you're gonna end up wanting to take another break. After yeah, but I both. think, but I think that's gonna that's needed anyway. Shit, I don't mind. I feel, I feel like I might do that more often because I I literally I literally got off of socials just to lock in. Mm. It was one of those things where I knew I had a lot of things coming up. And I was like, like you said earlier, just trying to eliminate the distractions. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to eliminate anything that uh, could potentially distract me from doing what I was doing. And one of those biggest, one of those distractions was, you know, you just, you wake up in the morning the and, you, click on. you know, after you say, you know, thank you for waking up or whatever, you just scroll to see what you missed. And, and truthfully, <laughs> that has changed. I look at emails first. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now I look my at client wants to talk. I look at emails or I look at my text messages and stuff like that. And the people that are supposed to reach me will reach me, and the ones that don't, just gotta wait till I, I sign back on. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say this to my future clients. My price is my price. I'm gonna say this again because uh, it's crazy <laughs> I have to say that again because I had a client hit me up and um, they asked for they asked for a certain service. And no, I'm not a prostitute. Um, <laughs> they asked for a certain service. And I told them my price. They said, wow, really? Yeah. Mm. Why is that? They asked you why? Yeah. why? One second. I'll give me one second. Went on my calculator. Calculated more. Oh, I, oh, I apologize. It's actually more. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually more. I try to charge you what? I try to be, I'm going to be, I'm transparent. I try to charge them. I didn't try to. I was trying. I was going to charge them six fifty for a shoot. Mm-hmm. Um, six fifty three. I was actually lowballing myself. Three outfit changes. I was probably going to be in there for like four hours. Mm. Bring my camera. Oh no, the camera has upgraded. and The equipment has upgraded. As well. That's what I'm saying. Too. Yeah. <laughs> the, equipment, the equipment has upgraded. Yeah. And plus, I've talked to my tutor. Apparently, my work is great. So. <laughs> She said, "Oh, there's nothing wrong with your lighting. This like this. It's actually perfect." I said, "Okay, cool." All right. So after that conversation, the price has went up. <laughs> um. So my price is my price now. But yeah, yeah, bro. It's I, I'm probably gonna when I get back or whatever. You know, the price is my price too, and figuring that out, and you know, it's just more room to grow, more room for elevation, and things of that nature. Yeah, I gotta say this one more time. <laughs> did I did I bring this one? Did I bring this up? Me working at the dealership. Nah. You worked at a car dealership? <laughs> yeah, as a photographer. Really? For a day. <laughs> Shouts to Andy. <laughs> oh, Andy, I respect it. What they try to charge you there? They try to get pay you there, bro? All right. So, I got a job being a car photographer, right? Okay. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so I get there. I mean, I had the conversation with the dude about it, but he's like, oh, are you good with technology? I was like, yeah, I'm a photographer. I gotta, gotta know stuff about technology. I get there. He gives me like a, um, a gimbal. Mm. Cool. It's like a small ass box though. So the box is like this big. A gimbal. I said, oh, it might be that um, Z, whatever it's called. Yeah. I, oh, I look at it. It's actually a gimbal for my phone. I said, well, what would I need this for? Okay. Mm. He said, "All right, you gonna be taking pictures on your phone." Wait. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm. This, this isn't, this isn't it. All right. 
I'm like, all right, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> in my mind, I'm gonna play along. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. I'm like, I'm gonna play along. I drove, I drove 27 minutes, bro. You see how 20 minutes look out here, bro? <laughs> it's that's 20 miles. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna sit here and chill for a bit, bro. Taking the pictures, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you take it like this at an angle, at the headlight angle, boom, boom. All right, take the pictures. All right, now you gotta do a video. All right, my nigga. So you want you to do the video? You want on me the phone? to be a videographer and a photographer on this iPhone? Cool. All right. Then it starts raining. Cool. He said, "Oh yeah, so you get paid for every car you do." How many cars said, did you do, brother? It's gonna rain for three hours. Mm. Only been there for an hour. Mm. On one car. For every car. Ten dollars. What? Well, wait. Did you? This would make a great topic for next episode. <laughs> but we, uh, can, we can do that. But uh, just out of curiosity, was this explained beforehand? He didn't explain it properly. He didn't explain it because as he as he said it in person, I was like, "Yo, bro, this this is not what you said." Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely yeah. We can wrap this one up and get straight into the next one because yeah. That, but, but shout out to him though, because I I told that nigga I got a job at a magazine and he he he's like, oh, congratulations, man, you're doing great. Like, I'm proud of you, dude. <laughs> so he's white. No, he's black. Oh, okay. he's black. Parents, parents got to definitely be from um Arkansas or something. But um, but yeah, it was good. It's definitely great seeing you. Yeah, first it's been a while. Been a mad long, uh, setting up. This was this was dope. You got a nice place here. This, I appreciate it. Y'all, y'all, can, y'all can see the work. I one day I'll show y'all a picture of the whole thing. But that's yeah, cool. This is new artwork. This is new background. You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let them know where they can follow you. I, I appreciate you pulling up, boy. You already know that this is down the camera guy. Ain't you know, you know, no more Don Peasley for y'all niggas no more. Straight down the camera. Go follow me there. Don't follow me anywhere, please. That's it. I got uh, 3,000. I don't need no more. By the time I this come out, come out, I should be back online. But yeah, you can follow me at Stay Focus LA on Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. All things What's a Good Guy coming out every Monday at 8 a.m. on uh, SoundCloud. I, I don't know. Shit. <laughs> you uh, want this now? <laughs> uh, uh, what's a good guy dot com uh, YouTube backslash what's a, yeah. I got you that shit yeah <laughs> it's been a minute that one it's that one brother that was pretty good man yo y'all stay frosty beloved God is good baby all the time